Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with French knife maker and designer, uh, designer Jonathan Renaudin. Uh, you know him as K Max Rom. Like so many other makers, I was initially exposed to K Max Rom on Instagram. His unique tactical knives caught my eye uh, from first sighting with their aggressive shapes, oftentimes tantos, uh, and with their artful stylings and materials, and then the signature thumb well on the spine of the blade that was immediately compelling to me, and you can see it across a bot his whole body of work. Uh, Jonathan has 22 custom models of fixed blades, 11 folders, and a slew of production collaborations like this uh, concept Pelican, and uh, they're all different, but all recognizably K Max Rom. Now, I don't know much about this very uh, prolific designer, but that's why we're here, right? Uh, before we get to uh, Jonathan and K Max Rom, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know every time we upload a new video. And then also be sure to check us out on your favorite podcast app because oftentimes you'll start a video, uh, you know, maybe you're only in that room for 10 minutes and then you turn it off and you continue your day. Uh, but if you download this on your podcast app, you can listen to it on the way to work while you're mowing the lawn, doing dishes, folding laundry, et cetera, et cetera. And if you think what we uh, do here is valuable and you want to help support the show, do it on Patreon. Go check us out. You get a lot of uh, extras, uh, including interview extras, which you'll hear uh, from this show also. And, uh, well, you can enjoy a whole bunch of other exclusive opportunities. Quickest way to get there is thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. Jonathan, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, it's really good to see you, and it's really good to meet you after, um, before we started uh, rolling here, I was telling you, I've been following your work for about six years, I think. I was trying to calculate. I've been following your work for a long time and it's always been very compelling to me uh your your designs speak to me uh a lot of my tactical side uh really uh is drawn to your work the tantos i mentioned this thumb swell here which also seems good for trapping and and such tell how did you get into knives uh, let's start there you uh let's start from the from the rock bottom um, hello everyone again. Um, I've started uh, to be passionate because uh, I was a military and um, I didn't find the, the good blade to, to make my job. And then when I stopped, I decided to start making knives uh, by patient and uh, with, uh, with friends. So uh, I started to make some design and uh, just uh, work uh, along the days and uh, and days simply so you were in the military and you were using knives but you weren't happy with the knives you had or that you were given what were you yeah. given in the french military and what did you do in the military uh th they give uh, traditional blades uh with a spoon and uh, and forks so it's not really usable uh when you are in in wide side uh, just, uh, you know, tire bouchon, you know, to open a bottle of wines, oh, mm -hmm. you got it on the blade. Right. <laughs> it's not absolutely necessary now right. uh, in modern army. So I decided to make all the sorts of, of blade, uh, more tactical uh, uh, and aggressive blades, mostly. Uh, yeah, we were, we were, I was just mentioning the Tanto is, is a prominent blade in your, in your designs. Uh, obviously a tactical style blade, but also a very utilitarian blade. Um, uh, so when you were in the military and you were given this knife that had a fork and a spoon on it, what were the kind of things you were doing that you were wishing you had a good knife for? Uh, for to, to cut a uh, few things uh, in, in nature and all. Uh, it's not designed for uh, a typical use like... Uh, 
piercing uh, protection or uh, for combat. Uh, so we need more uh, um, dangerous blade, <laughs> mostly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just like uh, a multi-tool, you, you see? Yeah. It's not designed to be used. It's a very small conception and uh, you can break it in two times. Uh, so to use it every day, it's not good. Yeah, Simple. it's it's like it's good for a long train trip. You know, you're cutting up bread and you're cutting up cheese and meat, and then you can use the corkscrew and yeah, uh, you can eat with. One. Yeah, and then you get there and you throw the knife away. Yes, it just broke. <laughs> 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 oh, they change it now. Yeah, so, it's better blade. Oh, okay, okay. You know, it's funny because um, uh, just the american military does something where they uh they do a lot of contracting they'll have a design and they'll they'll contract different makers and uh you know whoever brings in the best and then i look over at italy and their military uses fox knives a lot of the time and to me that's like mm, that's premium yes uh, it's why uh, i have called them to make collaboration with fox knives and we designed that one Oop. yeah that one got carbon fiber and black coated blade, black spacer, black screws and clips. Contoured handle is beautiful. So what is this? Is this the Pelican? Yes, that's the Pelican. The first uh, collaboration I made on the folder. Uh, okay. You can have different. Oh, that's a beauty. OK, so. so uh, let's talk about this. Uh, Pelican is a model that that uh, well, it's a name you use on a lot of your knives. Um, this is a, also a Pelican. And, yes. And I feel like you have like the Pelican is a signature shape and a lot of it has to do with this right here. That's my signature. Exactly. What is tell me about that design feature and why that appears in all your work. It It's born by utility simply when it's open yeah sorry your sunstead your sun goes exactly at the good place the first time mm -hmm. just by ergonomics in normal position but the same the finger goes exactly where they have to go and in the front the same it gives yeah. a better prehension, simply. To yeah. make a strong cut by pushing when you put your hands here, or in reverse, when you have to cut uh, that way. Just made and uh, designed by utility. When you have to use it, you know how your hand has to, to go to be the more uh, efficient. I, I feel in fighting it. and in life. Yeah, I, I feel it, especially on this blade. Obviously, this is the only knife I have of your design right now, but I feel it right there. It it adds so much um, power to this little knife. This is a three inch blade yeah. and it's a very well produced and very well designed blade. But having this Thank space you. here, you're welcome. Having that space there really just allows you to put so much power, so much more power behind uh, your cut. It also looks good. How much does looks play into how you design a knife? First, I, I use uh, the a simple question. What will I have to do with that knife? Uh, this one you got uh, is made uh, like an EDC uh, with a good thickness on the blade, four millimeters, four millimeters on the titanium side. And uh, it, it's built a bit like a tank. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> for the reference, but uh, the the placement of the um, the lock and the 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 side block you can see there mm -hmm. is made like a, a vertical line. So it gives a lot of strongness uh, in the blade, and you can use it uh, with a, a lot of power and uh, hardly. It will not move, just blocked by uh, the more you push, the more it's blocked. Yeah. Simply. Yeah. 
And and that carries through from design to design. I mean, even your even your large fixed blades have that feature. And, yeah. Um, I got one. Let's see that. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm. Bigger one. Yeah. What is this model? This one is the Preta Two, fixed. And look um, at that handle. That looks like exotic wood handle. Tell me about the materials uh, in this. That's M Burl. Elm, oh, okay. Burl. Right. That uh, totally disappears in the 19th uh, in France and Europe. Yep. So it's an old stock uh, I have with friends. And I use that sort of uh, wood and, uh, and high, uh, high uh, level materials. That blade, it's a damas steel blade, Vinland. Oh, it's beautiful. I got to tell you, Jonathan, the elm burl means a lot to me because I grew up in a house in Ohio that had a huge elm tree that covered the entire house. And then um, when I was about 25 or 30, something like that, my, my mom and dad had to cut it down because it got sick. Oh. It got the Dutch elm mm. disease. But um, you don't see too many elms here either. So to see elm burl on that handle, it that's, that's very rare. Yeah, it's beautiful. And the look is amazing. It is amazing. So you make these these custom fixed blade knives. Um, I mean, look at that Tanto. That is aggressive and and beautiful at the same time. That's my my taste personally. I like things that are both beautiful like this, but also uh, aggressive and um, you know, martial, combative, or whatever you want to call it. That's it. That's the spirit of my blade. Yes. Mostly. I can see. And durability. That. Always. So who do you who is your customer? Who buys these custom knives? Oh, look at that. That's that the is, next one. That That's is the, the prototype of the of the folders Preta 2 with some okay. blade. Okay, so if you're not watching right now, if you're only listening, Jonathan is holding up a beautiful fixed blade knife called a Pretatu, and it's a, it's a uh, Tanto combat knife, fixed blade. Uh, but he also held up a folding version of this. Now, who's going to be making that folding version? That's concept. That's concept. Concept okay. knives. I, I, uh, I have two concept knives. I have one designed by you, and I have one designed by uh, Dirk Pinkerton. And I have to say, uh, Concept is doing a, an amazing job. I really, yes. uh, I'm very impressed with their knives. There is nothing to say uh, about it. They're just uh, well made and perfect executed. Uh, <laughs> just uh, joy and happiness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> joy and happiness, indeed. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like uh, they're taking chances too. They're, they're, uh, Everything is with a designer, and they're doing interesting, different things. Every knife is something different. Yes, but they they, they want to be uh, present everywhere on the, every side of the the blade for kitchen, for uh, uh, classic use, EDC use, hard use, uh, in folder, fix it. They are they want to be everywhere, <laughs> no, and yeah. they are good. So well, let's go. Yeah, they, they should be everywhere some... then if they're that good, you know? They are. So where are you talking to us from? Uh, from Instagram directly. No, no, uh, I'm I was sorry. knowing I... some of them. You're you're in France, right? Yes. I'm okay. French. Are you in the Pyrenees mountains? Yeah. Okay. And uh, wow. southwest. Okay. Southwest. So near Pays Basque. Oh, all right. So you're near Basque territory in Yeah, so fifty kilometers. Oh, Just wow. straight. So what's it like there? Oh, it's just beautiful. <laughs> That's uh, ocean, mountains, wildlife. Uh, <laughs> perfect for a knife maker. Because your pictures on Instagram oftentimes feature backgrounds that are beautiful. And I'm like, God, where is this guy? This is gorgeous. <laughs> That's wood and uh, wildlife. I got trees uh, uh, and a uh, nice place. So uh, I use the place first. And uh, I try to make my best to to take good photos, and give uh, some people want to to buy them or just look. That's so, a part of work. I, I see this. 
I see this and I think about what you're doing, living in this beautiful spot in the mountains, making knives. Uh, and it's very artful. And to me, you know, as a, uh, you know, I was an art student and art history student. And I think, wow, he's really following in the, in the French tradition of aesthetics and, and, and living an artful life, you know, even though you're creating these, um, these, these beautiful tools that can be both military and tactical, but also useful EDC. You're like, uh, you know, a painter living in the mountains, soaking up the natural and, uh, and, and making, and making knives. <laughs> That's my Thank romantic so notion. <laughs> I see. I will fall in love. <laughs> so, uh, so living up there and, and taking your military, um, background and also living in the mountains tell me about uh how you go about designing a knife and how your inspiration kind of feeds your designs uh as you can see all my blades name pelicans so it's from uh, nature first the the pelicans <laughs> yeah uh, that's sure you can recognize the the, the birds with the uh, the front parts the eyes and the the right. I don't know how we'd call it. Like um, the feathers, the wings planes. and the feathers, yeah. Wings, exactly. That's it. And after all, that's utility. I try to, to make some knives you can use first. On wood, on EDC, on military place. It's very the, the inspiration is the end too. Uh, when you got it in hand, you can feel it uh, straight. It's made for all your hands. Mm -hmm. That's uh nature uh utility and hands that the the most part of my hands uh, inspiration you can you, okay you're talking about the hands we're talking about ergonomics here and how it actually f fits in the hand and this this is one thing about this little knife that i love okay so uh, i bought this knife because i love the way it looks and i've been following you a long time and this this one just this one just hit it for me and as i mentioned to you before it was a real struggle to decide between the tanto and the uh, the Warncliffe. Uh, it's uh, hard for me too when I have to choose in the morning which one I have to go <laughs> for. Uh, it can be that one or that one. So I, I want I want to talk about uh, the the bl different blade shapes. But before we get there, I want to let you know that the ergonomics mm -hmm. on this knife is one of the reasons why I kept it. I, I ordinarily like bigger knives. But I like this design so much, I bought it. Usually I buy smaller knives and I sell them after a while. But I've kept this one because it fits in the hand so well. It it really, um, yeah, it feels great in hand in both grips. And I don't really use it like this often, <laughs> but I like the way it feels. Um, so the ergonomics are, are, I totally feel your concentration on that. But let's talk about the blade shapes. You have this and the Warncliffe in the yeah. Concept Pelican. What are their different uh, uses for you? The Tanto is more for tactical and uh, and combat, uh, f to be honest, because mm -hmm. the, the perforation is more uh, uh, deep uh, when you use a Tanto than a, a, a warm cliff one. The, the position point change all the all the performance of the blade. Mm -hmm. mostly some people prefer this one for EDC and this one for um, classical use and sometimes the reverse uh, you you get to to have one uh, or the, the two to see really the difference when when you want to cut this one got a great shape and a great balance to cut this one there's typically two position straight mm -hmm. cut or uh um, sorry <laughs> yeah no. um sort you of you can like change a... the positions right you have two position cut there you, you have only one but a longer one got you got you yeah and they actually um now that you're so uh holding the tanto you can use that front edge in in sort of a pull cut Yes, and and then you can use this in a in a sort Just of push. Bless your hand normally, mm -hmm. and use it like a, a kitchen knife with your index on. Oh yeah, that's the same with two finger. You can keep your your blend in position, but you can also 
touch your hand in the front and use mm -hmm. only the small point. Oh, yeah. And you can cut and do sm small work with that sauce. And you can do the same with a one cliff one. There. And you can use it safely in your hand. Okay, so if you're only listening, Jonathan is choking all the way up on the blade so that only the tip is being used. And with the swale on the back of the spine and, uh, and, the, and the thumb ramp, it makes it very comfortable to actually hold in that position. And, you know, uh, you're, you're doing delicate work here, so you're not going to be cutting yourself um, with, your, with the edge there. You were mentioning the tip positioning. Uh, the tip position on the Pelican Tanto is obviously uh, kind of in line with the spine. And then the tip yes. the tip with the worn cliff is more aligned with the center line. Exactly. What, what is the benefit of that center line tip like you have there on the worn cliff? It, it gives uh, more strongness uh, of the cutting uh, side. Uh, when you, you cut... The um, the position blade give you. <laughs> it's really hard to translate uh, the, by the French. Um, how do you say it? Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I think I think maybe uh, uh, the worn cliff on top is better for this kind of pull cut. Yes. Or, or, or like when you when you have something on a surface like a piece of paper and you're cutting or, or something, it seems like that worn cliff with the tip down there might be better for that. Yes, too. Uh, and both sides, you can... The perforation and of the blade and the, the part used on the cutting uh, uh, perforation is bigger with a one cliff than a tanto because you start to cut there and after there. Uh, yeah, that is the first. So it's very aggressive. You see, yeah. when you start to cut with the tanto, you use that part. And there, you straightly on the point. Right on that tip. So you get more, more precision that way, too. You get more um, ability to get in close and, and tight with that. Mm. So you, <clears throat> you're, we mentioned before, you're, you're in the Pyrenees, you're in France. France has a rich history of knives and knife making. And right now it's got a lot of uh, great knife makers. Uh, uh, you know, I'm thinking of uh, yourself and uh, Fred Perrin and David Lespec and, and lots of other guys that, that make uh, very beautiful work. What, what is it like in France for knives and knife makers? Historically, it's a long, long story in France uh, with knives, swords, and uh, cutting tools, mostly. Uh, the the France got uh, the the chance to have a a piece of uh, mountain in uh, in Alps uh, named Thiers. I'm sure you know it. Mm -hmm. uh, they designed the um, the Laguiole and the Opinel. Okay. Um, it got uh, a regional place with tons and tons of knife makers, traditional makers, regional makers, because every part in France, every re uh, every state uh, mm -hmm. that the same in France, every state got the their own knife. So it's a long, long story of knife in France. If you go in Britain you will get that sort of knives if you go in Alps in another sort if you go in course another sort and on the south another sort everywhere there is a knife a typical knife of the near the, the town we got plenty of knife makers talented knife makers custom knife makers traditional knife makers modern knife makers that's knife uh, knife life <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, yeah and 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 um you know, I'm one of the things I think of when I think of French culture is food and the culinary um, mm. uh, arts in in France. And there's a whole rich. I have a um, uh, sabatier uh, oui. a knife. It's such a great. It's a it's a it's an old sabatier. It was my grandmother's, and it's um it's all uh, patinaed, 
and it's carbon steel. It's beautiful, and it gets so sharp even still. Yes. Um, uh, so, but I, I love the idea of each region and each state having its own um, signature kind of knife. Um, like I think of the uh, in in Italy, I think of the patata uh, mm. in the island of. Um, what is it? Sardinia has the patata and it's a very uh, yeah. recently made popular by Spiderco in their version of the patata. True. Um, so where you are, what is the um, signature knife of, of the area you're in? It's look like uh, the Basque knives and uh, with an, uh, an option, uh, you can change the blade to have a mushroom knife. So that's, a, that's like a sickle kind of like a, yeah, it's a uh, that's uh, that shape, mm -hmm. and it's cutting on the side to go around the mushroom to cut the feet of the mushroom. And then the it's got a little a little brush on the back. Yeah, and you, and you brush <laughs> off the <laughs> exactly. That. Okay, so so that's the signature knife of your area. That means there's a lot of great mushrooms growing around there, right? I mean, uh, they sip. Okay, so so that's a big foraging mushroom foraging is a big thing there. There is a lot of sort of mushroom too in France, about culin cu culinary um, tradition too. We use them uh, on food. So when you want to eat, you always have a knife. Right. It's in the culture. Yeah, uh, I love the open elves. Um, they're they're a big favorite of mine. I give them as gifts, uh, and people don't realize they need a knife. And then they have an open L, and it's. Um, you know, it's orange and it's happy and it's sharp and it works great and it's light. And you throw it in your bag and you've got a knife and suddenly uh, people can't live without it. My mother carries her open L everywhere. She even travels with it internationally and kind of gets away with it because she's a sweet old lady. Mm. Sorry, Maya, my, you're not old. <laughs> sure. My grandfather, uh, that sort of, of man too, always have a, a knife on you, a piece of, par uh, of paracord. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, a fire. A light. Yeah. I mean, that think, is. think of it. If you have a knife, a piece of string, and a lighter, and you lose yourself in the woods, you can, if you know what you're doing, you can get out. You can leave. Yeah. So what's, what, is, what is your lifestyle like up there? Um, I, I, I know you have a lot of knives with production companies, mm -hmm. but you also do custom knives, and you live in this beautiful place. Um, Tell us a little bit what it's like uh, being you and as a custom knife maker in this beautiful spot. Are you always working in your shop? How does this, how does your day go? Yeah. Uh, first, when I wake up, uh, I try to make uh, a good uh, photos of uh, uh, knives and coffee. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, my first thing uh, when I get up. Then uh, I open my shop. I post the, the pics. And I start by uh, making knives uh, or design or making, uh, cutting uh, the steel, uh, adjust uh, the handle, polish the handle, prepare for head treat, and, uh, and and then all uh, all the steps you have to do to, to build the knives. And uh, I try uh, with uh, cigarettes to answer to question. I go back to knives, answer question, <laughs> gotcha. go back to knives. Uh, sometimes that with uh, manufacturers to talk with uh, on uh, typ typical design, uh, modifications, uh, reflection uh, around a, a model and uh, prepare collaborations. And sometimes that's for... Uh, I get up and go to to show or or demonstration uh, test or uh, talk to test. <laughs> all, all depends. Okay, so you're living the dream, basically. Yeah. <laughs> you wake up every day and it's knives all day. Uh, I got to see two dogs, so oh. it, it takes time. Two okay. children, uh, a wife. <laughs> they take care of themselves. No, I'm just kidding. Sure, I'm in house, so I can. I mean, that's uh, uh, to me that that sounds like uh, it sounds amazing because you get to use your hands, you get to make your own work, your custom orders. You also get to deal with the outside world. You're not just stuck inside your studio making your knives. You're also dealing with factories and different orders. And and uh, 
I don't know. To me, to me, that sounds like a great blend because you get to keep your hands in it, but you also get to keep your mind in it in a business sense. Absolutely, you have to to stay open to uh, to the world and modern uh, knife making life uh, needs you to to be uh, connected, to be accessed, uh, and uh, to make collaboration with others, uh, with uh, um, other knife makers, with uh, knife shops uh, mm -hmm. like. Uh, the, the the shop who sold knives uh, i've made a collaboration uh, a few weeks ago with a uh a coutel in coutellerie oh, okay and, um and try to to be accessible for the the most of people possible so does this mean i'm sorry to interrupt you does this mean you're doing an exclusive uh yes an, okay oh cool we, and we what's, make what's the place called pits. Le Coute, let's say it again uh sorry uh i'm sorry what's what uh online uh, knife store uh coutellerie tourangelle okay we we build that uh, collaboration that Ooh. one mm -hmm. so only 300 piece with leather this on a design oh man just with them and for them Okay, so if you can't see this, uh, Jonathan is holding up uh, a, a a Pelican Tanto looking blade with a beautiful wooden handle, and this is an exclusive for. Um, I'm sorry, I won't even try. Can you say it again? Coutellerie Tourangelle. Okay. It's a, a knife shop. You can uh, buy uh, firearms, uh, knives, uh, tools, and. Uh, different kind of uh, things uh, around the, the the arms that is a cool i don't know man i i might have i'm going to check that out because that that's a beautiful knife and it seems like uh to have an exclusive like is... blade hq like knife centers and exactly so uh friends i mean we talked about uh, a lot of french knife makers obviously it's a receptive culture um, but what's it like legally, uh, knives um, and um, oh. in, in, Fr in France? What's that like? In France, it's very complicated. Uh, you can't uh, have a knife on you. You uh -huh. can't uh, use a knife in the public place. Uh, you can use them in your house, in your garden, but not on public place. It's totally forbidden. Whatever the, the side of the blade, the type of the blade, uh, fix it or uh, folders every blades are forbidden uh, to have on you on, on your pocket on your bag it's totally forbidden completely everything even a even a little swiss army knife uh, the same thing on your keychain it, it already depends about the policeman okay uh, oh, okay. okay you see uh, the laws say no but the uh, the policeman can uh, appreciate the situation if you see you if he see you uh, with a knife uh, doing uh, by cutting a, a piece of bread for eating uh, at uh, at the lunch he will never say you anything you know that's to it uh, if you see that you are aggressive violence and you got a knife you take the knife and you go to jail Right. That's simple. He, he, he appreciate the, the the situation and try to to make a decision and the correct one. Yeah, using using personal discernment. I think that's. Uh, yeah. uh, I think a lot of the police officers here are like that too. Um, I would imagine. I don't know. I, of course, I'm an older guy too, but uh, it seems like uh, you know if if you have a knife on you and you're in your well, you know what? I'm not even going to talk to that. But I, I, I know a number of police officers through work, and they all seem kind of cool. So if you're if you're respectful, they will probably be respectful. Um, Absolutely. But all that being said, just be careful what you carry and know your laws. Uh, um, you know, I know a lot of places don't allow uh, locking knives. Is that an issue where you are? Uh, I guess. I guess. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, it's a problem for for the knives because they they got a, a blade block system, so it can use a, a, as a fixed blade. 
And for the, the most of people, fixed blade have made for murder or for combat or mm. um, dangerous things. It's not true uh, in reality. Uh, the blade is not dangerous. The guy can be. The guy who who's, who used the, the blade is like firearms. Uh, the, the blade, uh, if you take it sl only the, the the knife, it will kill nobody. The, the guy can make bad things, but not the blade. Right. So it's it's difficult to talk about that sort of things because politicians have got the ideas about it. Um, peace man. Uh, don't want anything uh, you got to compose with every opinion the, yes. the, the best you can do is to use it respectfully normally and uh, never to make bad things uh, if you you know how to combat with a knife uh, mostly of times you will uh, die by your knife right right so don't use it for for fighting or for to aggress people the, the, the guy who wins a knife fight is the one who dies second. <laughs> yes, dies last. most of the time. Uh, uh, it's funny because when I was in high school in the 80s, um, my parents went to France and I asked them to bring back a switchblade. They brought me a switchblade from France and uh, they, they, they you could buy them everywhere at the time. I don't know if things have, yes, if things you can have buy, changed. Yeah. No, but, nothing changed in that place. You can buy uh, the, the knife you want. Uh -huh. But you can't uh, go everywhere with it. You have to keep it in your house. You can buy everything, swords, uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever the knife you want, but you have to keep in, uh, keep them in your house. Just leave that, it at uh, home. That's low. So a funny thing, you were talking about politicians ruining it for everyone. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I live in the state of Virginia in the United States, and in Virginia... Uh, we have a, a governor, it's like the president of the state, mm -hmm. uh, who who got in trouble because oh. he, he did some racist stuff when he was a kid. But um, so um, right after he got busted for this, uh, a company wanted to start a knife company in a, a very poor part of Virginia. And he was so worried about starting a knife company in Virginia that he said no he do, he wouldn't let them start because he was so worried about his own reputation he didn't want to be seen as someone who was um, inspiring or encouraging weapon sales and so because he made a mistake when he was in high school that he got busted for and now a whole sector of the industry and a whole part of our state had to suffer so knives and politicians just don't seem to mix it's it's nearly the same there too, because all the politicians are more preoccupied by the what what the people think and look when they look them. Uh, so they sometimes they change their mind. They say the things they can help them mostly. Yeah. They not. Uh, Every time make the, the great decision for the people or the industry, they do, just try to to do the best for them. First, the pay, the the advantage they, they got, uh, and not for the rest of the people. That's sad. I cannot disagree with you, sir. I cannot <laughs> disagree. Um, so let's talk about the difference between... So uh, before I painted this idyllic picture of you... Uh, making custom knives in this beautiful space up there in the mountains. And I love that picture, but there's another picture. You do a lot of these collaborations. What is it like working with Fox knives with Kaiser with concept? What is the process uh, like? The, the first uh, I try to um, make knives with utility. When I've built uh, the, the Pelican for Fox, the idea was to make a stronger knife as possible uh, for uh, bushcraft use and uh, to have a folder as strong as a fixed blade. Um, when I uh, collaborate with uh, Kaiser, it was to make a, a gentleman folder. Mm. So we made the, the Pelican Titanium, that one. Very lightweight, uh, good slicer. 
uh, Thin Blade. Uh, then, uh, when I contact the concept, uh, we decide to make an EDC knife. And then a tactical knife. Uh, that the, the proto I show you mm -hmm. just after. That the Preta 2 spear point or tonto point. Oh, God, that's so cool. I love that. So when I decide to make a collaboration, it's to make, uh, to make a, a type of knife. Uh, and, and I don't want to stay always on the same brand. I want to to be uh, to not only one activity for one brand. You see, I have yes. um, to have more activity on other brands. That way, I can keep um, the the shape of the blade on each brand and uh, design other knives for their brand too. Yeah, it's like you're marking them. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's a that's a great idea. Plus, you get to leverage the strength of each of these OEMs. I mean, uh, um, you know, I think it's I think it's like I said, this uh, this EDC from Concept is awesome, and it like you said, it's built like a tank. So I can see them scaling up your designs into something larger, something more tactical. Um, but when you designed for Fox, you were you were looking at Bushcraft at the time, and uh, so and and Kaiser a gentleman's folder. But that doesn't mean you were, you're not going to come back to Kaiser for tactical or something else. Yes, I can design uh, other type of knives uh, for for uh, Kaiser, like a uh, slip joint mm -hmm. uh, for gentleman use too. But it can be um, conforcé. Uh, I don't know if you say them. In... Say that again. Renforcé, flat crown. Uh, it's a um, a system of block. Uh, oh, 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 uh, uh, okay. Um, like a slip joint, the the same systems. Okay. You, you have to force on the blade to. Yeah. Tap, tap. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, oh, like a ratchet. Yes, too. Okay. It can be. Okay. It I can be a fixed blade with a fox, by example. Right. It can be um, EDC blade, or uh, I, I can choose every brand and propose uh, every system or every every type of shape you want. I've just tried to have more activity and more brand in my catalog than one. Yeah, who who would you who else would you like to work with? Oh, thousands of people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cold Steel, I would love to, to work with a USMA-made uh, brand because uh, it's an historic one. Uh, I've, uh, I've got a lot of Cold Steel too. Um, I would love to, to work with uh, Chris Reeve, oh, yeah. by example, because uh, I love the shape and the, the spirit of the, the brand. I would love to work with uh, Todd Begg, who is a friend of mine, or with Marfion. Uh, I got plenty of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you uh, do? You have a collection yourself? Do you collect knives? I were, uh, but uh, when I start making my knives, I sell a lot to to make money. Sadly, I've lost a very very beautiful piece, but it helped me to to build mine. So now uh, I still have some blades, yes, and uh, but. Uh, not a lot. Well, what uh, what what is your taste? What do you like to collect? What kind of knife makers uh, do you enjoy? Oh, uh, I enjoy a lot uh, Todd Beck. Uh, I've got uh, some uh, directly by his, his hand uh, mm -hmm. on show because uh, we exposed together years ago. Uh, Bob Terziola. Uh, it's uh, for me. It's a legend. Uh, so uh, I know him. I have uh, offered him a blade. I've got a blade from him. Never customs because uh, I'm just too poor. <laughs> but it's a dream. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Uh, I love uh, Chris Reeve. I've said I love uh, Cold Steel Zero Tolerance. Um, you got a very good industry and custom knife makers. Uh, I love American brands uh, mostly. 
Yeah, and some Japanese ones. Uh, I'm, I, I were a collector, so uh, all the, the biggest brands uh, were just fantastic. So you you mentioned Cold Steel a couple of times. I am a uh, it's no secret I'm a I'm a big Cold Steel fan, and um, uh, I, I they were um, they were around when I was a kid, and yeah. that's that's why it's always stuck with me. But one thing that I really love about Cold Steel is that they combine super strength, super strength with historical designs. They'll take yes. stuff like the stuff I have on the wall. Uh, as a matter of fact, they the saber over my shoulder, they did a version of this, the 1917 Naval Cutlass. They'll take historical pieces and update them and make them super strong for modern yes. modern times. And I think that is great. And they, uh, they did that with my favorite folding knife of all times, the Spanish Navaja. In the, uh, uh, it, to me, that's the most beautiful knife out there and they did that with the espada so i could see you working with them because of your i don't know you you seem to have uh you seem to be in touch with a bit of the historical knife design yes i would love uh honestly i would love to work with them i've got as you uh, a lot of uh, cold steel blade like the taipan like uh, the espada like the recon one uh, and i love the the mind uh it's simply it's strong and it's usable mm -hmm. and uh that the the first i got when i was in army uh before i start to to making my own knives and design uh, that brown is uh, is just uh built simply and it works it always works always uh, it's funny because people would sometimes, um, well, the cold steel, the the cut, like some of the videos people didn't like mm -hmm. because they were testing and on pigs and stuff like that. But it's another, a part of the job exactly. to, to test the blade. Exactly. Uh, but another criticism they got was their steel. Oh, they only use AUS-8 steel. Mm. And um, yeah, it's not great steel. But still, it worked on those knives very, very well. Uh, how do you feel about different steels, super steels, and that? Uh, how important are materials in your design? It's very important. Uh, um, I've tried to to test and uh, to see the best steel possible uh, to be to, to have an accessible price at the end mm -hmm. and the the best performance uh, when you use them. I have chosen the the N six hundred ninety CO because it's stronger. It's a strong steel, and if you got a good head treat, uh, you can push them that uh, sixty one uh, HRC. Hmm. So it's look like a good a good p place for performance uh, resistance um, to keep the your blade sharp and. Um, it's still uh, stainless, so it's very good to for everyday use. There is better steel, mm -hmm. there is higher steel, uh, there is less steel, but this one looks like uh, the middle of the um, of the the the, the steel you can pl uh, have or choose. Uh, it's not cheap. It's not uh, very high in price, so you can give. A good um, a good compromise uh, at the end with your knives. Uh, I should use uh, better steel like uh, damas steel or uh, 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 zero um, o one or uh, three v. I got uh, s thirty five vn on the the concept one on mm -hmm. the kaiser one too. That's great steel, historic steel, American steel too, and. Uh, for for me, that's the, the best uh, you you can choose, because if you got uh, a cheap uh, steel, you will have problem with. If you mm -hmm. go on the higher price steel, uh, it's really not be accessible for the most of people. That okay. that the difficult uh, of the of choosing a steel. Mostly. Well, so as a collaborator with an OEM like Kaiser or Concept, do you have you do you get the full choice, 
Or do they say, no, we're making this in titanium and S35, give us a design? With my first collaboration, I tried to make compromise with uh, the first brand. And then I decided to impose some uh, some some things, few things, but uh, to, to block them and keep them uh, as I said. Because mm -hmm. I want a uh, good result and I'm sure that the choose I made was for the best. And manufacturer can have uh, another vision of the, the custom part and just try to make rentability, uh, to make uh, um, the most profit they can. And mm -hmm. always not the good choice to make uh, a lot of profits because it deserves on the, the, what the people think about. Mm. Um, the result for me is more important than the than than the money we made with you because your name is going on it. You want to make sure that it's yeah. a good design and that it stands the test of time and that it's not just a, another knife design that comes and goes. Mm. That there is your name, as you said. You you don't want to make bullshit. <laughs> you don't yeah. want to 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 make problems to customer. Uh, if a knife breaks on the hand uh, of a guy, you, you will think about it, it will be a problem. You want the best quality possible for the price you give. You want it to be honest, uh, you want it to be uh, good and normal, <laughs> simply. Yeah. Uh, first, I'm a user. So uh, when I take a knife, I want to be sure to make the task I want with the knife. And I want to be in, dun in danger or in trouble because the, the steel is uh, not so good or because the, nice. the, the adjustment is too flat, is too large because uh, it's a tool first. And your hands, your fingers are on. You, you, you can injure it yourself by using the knife. And for me, that's not possible. You have to be sure. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um, you say it's a tool first. And uh, of course, you cannot disagree with that. But in the last 10 years or more, knives have become like jewelry. Knives have become collector's items more than they ever were before. And there are more people buying knives now. Uh, and they fit their lifestyle and that kind of thing. Um, what have you observed the knife? How have you observed the knife world kind of growing in the last 10 years or since you've become a part of the knife world? I'm sure that uh, the knife uh, place will be uh, uh, split in two parts. The custom knives, uh, that is mostly for collectors and uh, the, the people who want to have a, a, a knife style. Uh, I don't know if uh, very uh, easy to understand. And the industrial part was made for uh, people who want uh, accessible price knives and usable. I'm sure the the, the market will split in in these two parts. Mm -hmm. uh, I have my my uh, shop and my um, my mind is, is split too. Uh, I made some custom knives. For the people who want an, uh, a knife with their own taste, for their own use. Uh, and sometimes it's for collecting. And when it happened, I, I said to the guy, I'm not mm, here for that. If you want to have a, um, a display knife, uh, it's perfect. Uh, there is a lot of knife makers who love to make them with MoQT, with a... Uh, um, high my very 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 high material and it's good for them uh, take uh, one with Timascus, but don't go on wood to use them and so i made that kind of uh, custom knife for that kind of people and for the other people i've made um, tactical blades strong blade bushcraft uh, blades that that there is no fear to use uh, them and to make them live that's uh, what I think about the, the future on knife uh, community. Well, well, we'll definitely see. I, I, I almost feel like that's already starting to happen, uh, but that's, that's an interesting take. So where can, um, where can viewers and listeners 
find your work, catch up with you, and find out what you have coming up in the future? Oh, um, large question. <laughs> um, I will continue for sure because uh, I'm passionate about it. Um, but I will continue to to make the both side of the the work. So try with, to work with uh, big brands and make collaboration, and uh, continue to make custom because the the market is is double. Yeah, I have to to keep that way too. Uh, I love them too. <laughs> <laughs> and I would imagine as a knife maker, it feels good to do both. Oh. I know. think it is for me, but uh, every maker will have another opinion. Oh, that's true. And uh, I'm sure it depends uh, about the, the place where you live. Because uh, when you live in London, uh, to, to make knives is more complicated than in, a, in my place or other place. Some countries are very bad for knives, simply, and they blocked uh, a lot of uh, people who make uh, knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some creative workarounds. I know there's a company uh, in England called Who's Blades, and uh, uh, they're making those uh, double detent slip joints uh, that are very much like every every. They're very much like this, but no lock. You know, so they're making their way around it a little bit, but still, it's pretty restrictive. It's due by, by how by uh, their law, simply. It's uh, you can use them uh, if it's not under three inch, hmm. uh, if my memory is good, and we, you can have a, a block system on your blade. Right, right. In England, uh, on other country, there is other restriction in uh, Canadians uh, when you want to, to to chip a knife there you have to uh, make a part uh, take the, the blade out to um, to make a package separately in the same box but different piece mm -hmm. the the clip one side the blade one side every every country got his own laws and when you are a maker and you send knives every uh, world, worldwide uh, you have to to know every laws yeah. australia is different thailand is different Russia is different japan is different it's a part of the job who is unknown mm. but you 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 have to know it <laughs> yeah you got to be a, a legal a worldwide legal expert nearly <laughs> to send yeah. these knives. well uh jonathan thanks for joining us uh Instagram, you can be found on Instagram, right? That's where people can, I mean, I know I say, right. I know that's where I discovered you, but uh, people, you got to go to K Max Rum on Instagram because I think your photographs are awesome. Thank you so much. I, I try to make the best uh, I can on that side. It's a part of the work too. Uh, if you want the uh, people who love your love and uh, appreciate uh, your, your blade, you have to make them in situation. Take good photos, uh, great background. Try to work with the the, the brightness uh, when you take the photos. Um, it's a very important part uh, today because uh, social media is, is the only place you can show um, your art, your knives uh, without restriction. Because mostly on the on the um, on books, on magazine. If it is not a specific uh, magazine, it's always take like a, it's a murder, what he made, it, that's a, that's weapons, it's not good for people, kids can see them. Instagram give that uh, that vision. Uh, it's mostly it's made for, for photographers. So there is a lot of people who love photographers and uh, they are passionate by knives too. So it helps. But it's a good place to to show and very good people take to take a um conversation with uh, to to talk with other makers see what they do too because uh, as you said before you don't have to stay on your work you have to be open to the world mm -hmm. there is tons and tons of uh, good makers everywhere on the world and it's good for you when you are makers to see uh how other people goes on the same way than you. Absolutely. It's good for to, to grow up too. 
yeah, build a little community. Yeah. Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast. It's been a pleasure meeting you, sir. It was a real pleasure for me too. Thank you for everyone to watching them. All right. Take care, sir. See Are you. you looking for a book about knives or knife collecting, knives and self-defense, or the yearly knife Bible filled with hundreds of pages of information and pictures about your favorite knives? Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash books for your traditional favorites, new books about knives and the yearly knife Bible. Get your favorite knife book and support the show at thenifejunkie.com slash books. There he goes, Jonathan Renaudin. You know him as K Max Rom. Um, I, I've always loved his designs, and uh, ever since getting this concept in hand, I've been even more enthusiastic. I'm looking forward to, quite honestly, the newest uh, concept coming out. That one in Tanto, the drop point looks nice too, but that one in Tanto looks right up my alley. Can't wait to check that out. Uh, also, well, be sure to check us out here next week for another interview with another great knife personality or knife world denizen. Also, Wednesdays is our midweek supplemental where I talk about uh, various uh, knife world subjects. And uh, and then Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here, our live feed every week, except uh, when it falls on Thanksgiving. And uh, and then also be sure to download us on your favorite podcatcher, uh, Apple, Google, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and many, many others. Until next time, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, uh, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.